Hey, Ryan Thompson from Rotland Manufacturing here. I'm with Embry Herrick of CNC Blockworks here in Piney Flats, Tennessee. And we are talking today about the how and the why of lifter bushings and lifter boring, right? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Good to be back. Yes, great. We're at the F69 LS Block. These guys. Keyway lifter bore bushings. Yep, and you've been doing a good amount of them. Yes, we have. It's been a process. You've developed the recipe, developed, you know, your recipe and found different tooling and we've all worked together sure but uh start this off for the folks and for me i mean what you know why are we doing it well i kind of put it in perspective with like uh when you index your camshaft in you have to know exactly between the crank shaft degrees and the camshaft degrees well it's the same thing with the lifters if the lifters are kicked not centered in different positions throughout the whole block you you lose that tune that fine tuning that you need so you need to know exactly where they are where they're located and that that's not going to become a problem in the future too so that's kind of why, why we do it yeah and we have the unique opportunity with modern technology you know f69 and cncs and we were just having this conversation this morning yes and and you get your print right and we have blueprint values and you can look that up in the spec right and and it's you know very easy to say Ah, well, that's just it, and that's all in. And we don't even think about, well, where the heck is all this stuff actually lying in here, right? Right, right. And, and, and the machine gives us numbers, and we can use our probe here, and we can compare, and that's exactly what we want to do, because yes. sometimes it's pretty astonishing just how different it is, even a, a factory block, even something that's new, something that's, it's, it's not, you know, because everything has tolerances. Sure. And as I always say, everything, you know, had a tolerance to begin with, and was within that tolerance, and then it wore out, and now it's way more out of tolerance so and we see that quite often with the with the ls aluminum blocks especially because mm -hmm. of the everybody wants to push them you know a little harder a little faster so uh, well and the horsepower out all engines it's just sure i mean thousand horsepower engines seem oh to be, yeah yeah pretty easy every shop i go to they go yeah 20 years ago that, yeah. that wasn't easy to accomplish but today it's it's right. gotten much easier to do right. so. so with that all the components and to get to that level i think is something you know like you just said that the geometry and, and, and where it is in the block and the angle that these lifter bores are at really, really matters. It does. It the does matter quite a bit. The longevity of the engine. You know, it, it's, and you know, we, we talk about it all the time with the honing stuff and getting a straight and true and round bore and getting the friction out of the system is what gives you longevity and gives you power. And you got to also have the correct clearance between the the uh, bore of the lifter and the uh, lifter itself, mm -hmm. you know, and that improves on, how do you want to say it, uh, leakage of the lifter, especially on hydraulics. Uh, and if you can correct that, now is the perfect time to correct it. Perfect opportunity, and that's what we're doing, we're correcting. Um, let's go ahead, so we typed in some numbers here and we'll just let this probe, because it's always fun to watch a machine run. On oh video, yes, right? uh-huh. Um, so, so on here on the left, you got the blueprint. I just, I, I know it'll be tough to see on camera, but uh, Let's just go to the blueprint side. So those are all the numbers you typed in. And right. then, and then it, for the location on the in out, the programming, where this Y location is, we had all the numbers. We were just talking about this. Yes. Um, we, we, uh, we always use the dial area for the cylinder head gasket. And there's a specific, and then for the, um, the Y axis, we use from the center of the crankshaft to the center of the camshaft. And we can get these specs, right? We so. can get these specs because we have what on the machine is called a calculator in and out. And there's where you put your distance between the two and it finds the automatic Y for you uh, of the center of the camshaft itself, which makes it really nice. <laughs> Pretty intuitive, actually. It's, yeah. it's typing in numbers. Right, right. You know, and, and you know, I know I've shared with you, like I say, we, when you're doing things with manual equipment, and manual machines, and as an operator, you're very much focused on where this thing is going and how right. much do I turn this and that feel. Right. Uh, and you know, we were talking this morning, you're like, yeah, it's, I'm, you're looking at numbers on the screen trying to, cause you, you, you're so even so focused sometimes on the theory and the application, what you're doing behind it, that right. you, know, you go like, what am I even doing? Yeah. Because you're so, but that's the beauty of it, right? Is right. You have intuitive software, you have a, a machine that assists you and takes and alleviates some of that right. you know, mundane task that you can sit here, have these conversations and focus on what you're actually creating. Right, yes, you can. So the process we're doing here, um, and kind of the recipe you have is, is, like you said, picking up that dowel, pull, dowel pin hole. We zero out, we let this thing probe, and we're gonna see here in a moment just how 
different these these locations are compared. And then we have you know the choice and the ability to then correct and and move that, assuming we have material, and that's why we want to go and put these guys in, right? And one of the things it does too is it's uh, it takes four positions, so it's basically twelve, nine. Uh, six and three right and it comes across and it will actually give you a diameter of the lifter and uh, or the lifter bore itself and you can, you'll see a variances of a thousandths or more uh, depending on that yeah, just just from just board, from probing board. yeah, yeah. So, and, and well, to we, collect that much data that fast I mean oh yeah I mean <laughs> even when you do the cylinders on the thing it's the yeah. same way it goes oh lordy which is incredible about the machine and all I seem to do is what it'll do is that after this one, it's got a set where it'll roll over and do the, the uh, uh, right bank also. So you're going to get a, a complete basic uh, print of exactly where everything is located. So this is the first step in the process. I know we have some tools here and, and, and we can, we can you know, hold these up. Starting with this guy normally, right? Right. Rough the material out, long end mill. Right. Yeah. You can very easily with this. This is actually the tool we use for clearancing for crankshaft mm -hmm. stroker clearancing. But yes, and we've actually got a tool built that uh, say we're putting in a, uh, um, a lifter board sleeve and it's an uh, inch 060. Uh, it'll rough it out. And, and even if we're going to do like the, uh, the 930 sec seconds uh, lifter in the thing, we've got a roughing tool that'll just go from the 842 setting up to within 10 thousandths of it. And then we finish out from that point. Okay. It's just to speed the process just up. Just to speed it up. Right, correct. <laughs> because otherwise you'd be taking Oh yeah, if you do that away, yeah, in a single point cutter like this and to do that, you, you can't take a tremendous amount of material because it's no. it's fragile, you know, it just won't take it. Uh, but the, unless you run it super slow, but uh, So we run that first, right? And right. and and then you're switching over to that like you said that single point cutter. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. Talk to me a little bit about this. Now, I know this is uh, you know, pretty pretty unique lifter board tooling and, and obviously Rottler's packaging this to us and you have a hydraulic holder on here which I always right. think is fantastic because the run out and clamp force of that is yeah, it's much better. Yeah, than a collet or, or a set screw style holder. Uh, but this is your finish guy. So normally you're saying you're taking 10 thou and that's your finish pass. Yes, and, and what we do is we set up the lifter bore uh, uh, tool uh, for checking uh, the diameters mm -hmm. uh, or the clearances and everything. And then like we'll, we'll try to get it within five thousands and then we'll either cut it to finish size, or we'll leave a couple of like a thousands left, and we'll we'll uh, use the diamonds and and hone it out that way. Use the diamonds yeah, just to get that absolute yes. if you uh -huh. have to. And this has quite a, a pretty good adjustment on it, right? You're adjusting down to the tenth here. Oh yes, right yeah. on the machine, so yeah. you can check. You can bore that first one, check it, right, and then make an adjustment right here. And as, or as going. you go, because like you said, things are fragile, and it's quite a few holes. Right, uh, the insert is going to wear out, and thermal expansion happens and you are still but sure. as the operator you focus on that pause and take your time and let the machine just repeat right let it do itself um and yeah i mean you, you want to control because anything you know we're doing press fits here um usually what you're probably putting five thousandths on there so uh, we put a little less than that on the aluminum on we're a little tighter, a little tighter. Uh, than, than that part of it so but yes, we, we put a little less. But again, like anything with a press fit, you finish in with that single point and control that finish or even using uh, using stones to get it because once it's pressed in, I mean, you're, all the heat's got to go through that, right? That's so. true. That is true. So we had uh, one customer that we, he did a one of a kind. It was an LS and uh, a cast iron version and the block came with no hose in it. So we had to build a program in the machine to tell it where to go. Go from scratch. You yeah. know, off of a blank or billet camshaft. <clears throat> and uh, it'll do it, you know. You punch your hole, you go to finish, you push your sleeves in, finish them out. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, and of course, that's the final step. We have the these mandrels, I mean, uh, and, and these are key, right? You slip your slip your guy on there and make sure she's flat. And then the nice thing is, is boy, it, you already got the whole location. You just put them on that and you just, Keep loading these and it's on gonna them. it's gonna press every one of them to the desired the height and it indexes height. these keyed ones yes. which is so mm -hmm. critical because the other way to do that is jigs bolted on one at a time forever <laughs> it's forever right yeah so i mean the the time savings and the ability to sit here and have a conversation while it does things. that's true <laughs> Um, let's take a look at the uh the, you know, so we just finished up probe and if we if we go over to our probe values here 
And we've got that difference number in there. So tell me what you're seeing there. I mean, well, this is a little bit over fourteen thousands from the from the factory specs, mm -hmm. uh, and, it's and we're all, seventeen off in Y in the Y axis. So it's telling me that at some point in time, and it's consistent. <clears throat> this is one of the things you can look at too. And this is on the left side. We're consistently the same off all the way down the line until it gets to the end. We'll go to the other side and you'll see it's consistently off pretty close to. That's common with factory cut blocks. Is it? Yeah, so it's, it's nothing out of order. And I mean, 15,000 just sounds like a lot, but it, it is. Is that <clears throat> kind of normal for what you see in the, yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, I've seen them well. And the one thing too that we're looking at in this particular block is this is supposed to be a, a 802 or 842 lifter and we're at 844.1, 845.3, 857, 846.2, and it's just getting bigger and, and bigger. And on the right side, it's pretty much staying fairly consistent. So uh, already you can tell as you go down the line on this particular block that it's the lifter's housings or, or bores are actually so loose that they're, they're creating a problem. Uh, and when you see that, you know, so you're getting a, a story, you're putting right. it in your head there of what maybe could happen with the applications of the ceramic. Right, so you're right. like, you see numbers enough and you go, well, right. that was a factory block where this is worn out. You're seeing things that are oversized and you can see that really quick and begin to put together. Yes. You know, yes. What's, what's this been through and how, how good or bad was it really was it being ran? It's, it's not that bad, but at the same time, it, it, there is room for improvement. Yeah. And you know well as I do, anytime that that we can get everything mechanically sound and, and online, uh, then it's then it's going to it's going to duplicate to the, the efficiency of the motor, whether for fuel efficiency or horsepower or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, it does. And wrapping it up and correcting this, I mean, I mean, you have the opportunity here now, right? And and it's the combination of what you know, the process here, uh, the machine being able to give you this data quickly and right. be able to say, oh, okay, I can shift this here, I can do that, I can put things back to get those efficiencies out. Sure. And, and I think, you know, the biggest part I would say with CNC's is the fixturing. Yes. You know, and here we're in that ideal state. We're, we're on the mains and we're using that cam locator. Yes. And we're precision fit. And if you, you know, if you're doing these things through and through, you have that opportunity to make the main geometry right, make the cam geometry right, and then get all your bores Right. Right. And get these lifter boards right at the same time. You're doing, I mean, truly, truly blueprinting the whole thing and yes. using the right datums and the right tooling to right. get the best product. Right. Yes. So. It's good. Well, I appreciate it, Embry. Thank you, sir. Oh, appreciate you anytime. All Come right. back, visit us. You know it. What a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. He told us. Don't start cars, we are not going to listen.